Believe in Everything Auburn is brought to you by Bet Online, your number one source for all your betting needs. You can get the latest odds, lines, and matchup reports for baseball, boxing, golf, and more. Bet Online continues to be the fastest and easiest way to place your wagers, including live betting and your favorite casino and card games available to play right from your phone. So head to the website or use your mobile device to sign up today and get in on the action. Remember to use our promo code BELIEVE, B-L-E-A-V, for your 50% welcome bonus on your first deposit. That is Bet Online, where the game starts. War Eagle, everyone. Welcome back to Believe in Everything Auburn. You're listening to the sounds of Taylor Davis, Jason Campbell, on the mic, Talking Auburn sports as we love to do. So welcome in, everybody. Hope you had a great week since we last caught up. We were talking SEC Media Days. That has come and gone. We now await the beginning of fall camp, which then begins the 2023 season. It is time, people, and we're here to break it all down. And we are going to be joined by a very special guest we alluded to it last week, but Elijah McAllister is going to be joining us in about 10 minutes. We're going to welcome him into the show and kind of pick his brain a little bit about, you know, his transfer process, as well as what this team is looking forward to about fall camp and season. So I welcome in our audience. I welcome in my co-host, Jason Campbell. And Jay, while we've got a few minutes before we bring in Elijah, Big news yesterday, a very exciting day for the Tigers. I'm going to let you take the lead on this one because Hugh Freeze has certainly wasted no time, but arguably the biggest get of the Freeze era so far. Yeah, flipping a kid from Georgia to to Auburn, you know, really it's a five-star linebacker, uh, you know, has been committed to Georgia for a little while. And this guy, you know, he can play football. He has a, a knack for the game. Uh, he's a head hunter, which is what you want in a, in a linebacker. Uh, he's someone that you need a part of your class to make other signees say, okay, I need to pay more attention to what's going on over there at Auburn yeah. and not just get hung up on Georgia, not just get hung up on Bama. You know, two elite programs over the last couple of years have been competing for national championships, rightfully so. But I think the tide is starting to turn a little bit. I think, I think Auburn has now got someone at the head coaching position that understands recruiting and understands yeah. if you want to win games, it starts with getting talent and getting players and, and getting the right type of character guys. And I think that's what Freeze is doing. Uh, I think this 2024 class is shaping up to be really, really special. Uh, you know, as we continue, I think there's more on the way. You know, I, I think some is going to come during the season because a lot of people like to wait and see. Like we hear all the noise, yeah. but some of them want to wait and see how this football team is going to attack this year. Well, we look totally different than we did the last two years, which I, I 100% think so. That's going to draw attention because when you start winning, people want to be a part of that. And like I've told everyone, Auburn is right in the limelight where they want to be right mm -hmm. now because everyone is, is watching to see what this turnaround is going to look like. So if I'm a recruit, I want to be part of a turnaround to turn something into special instead of just being an addition to something that's already been been flowing for a couple of years. Right. This is prime time for some of these athletes to come in and really make their mark. You're not going to get lost in the shuffle. If you come in, put your head down and do the work that you're capable of, you could really write your own legacy pretty quickly, just given kind of the landscape of this Auburn program. I love that you said the tides are turning, pun intended, because when you watched Demarcus Riddick's commitment video, the hats on the table in front of him, <laughs> had the Alabama logo, the Georgia logo, and the Auburn logo. And it was so gratifying to watch a kid of that caliber reach for that Auburn logo with pride and enthusiasm and a real excitement all around him. This is a five-star linebacker, for anyone not familiar, out of Chilton County High School. Um, he spoke very highly just about the entire Auburn experience that he has already been a small part of the community, the fan base, the team, players. Knowing I'm an Auburn Tiger now, it feels great. There was a lot of excitement around his decision. 
And look, this is on the, you know, the beginning phases of Big Cat Weekend. And I can tell by your background that you're in Auburn. And so uh, I know you're going to be involved. You can tell the people a little bit about what this weekend entails. But you're right. He's going to be on campus along with some other very big name recruits. Perry Thompson being one of them who has previously committed to Alabama. This coaching staff has been hot on his heels trying to flip that one. He is slated to commit this weekend or announce his commitment. And he's actually going to be in Auburn for Big Cat Weekend. So it just seems like a name like this could be the first domino to fall. If you even consider him the first. Because look, this this class is already stacking up, like you said. And I think this coaching staff is putting a lot of investment because it's technically going to be the real first representation of their tenure is that class. Obviously, this year was a lot about making use of what you were keeping and also the transfer portal. Next year, you really kind of see what they're building this thing into. And so to get a five-star out the gate, flip him from the reigning national champs, this sets the tone for a big recruiting weekend. Oh, most definitely. Uh, you got to talk about Georgia's a program over the last three years have put a lot of guys in the NFL on that defensive side of the ball. Mm -hmm. And, you know, they've stacked a lot of guys. And uh, I think for, for Coach Montgomery and Coach Roberts, who's our defense coordinator, Coach Montgomery, who's our offense coordinator, having Perry Thompson on campus this weekend is a big opportunity for him and the offensive side of the staff to make their mark on him, you know, yeah. to show what it is that they want to do in the near future and what they want to do with big receivers. And everyone knows that Freeze loves big receivers. And uh, Perry Thompson, he fits that format. But you talk about the defense side of the ball, Coach Roberts, you know, this is a huge gift for him and Coach Garrett and Coach Aldridge, who's the linebacker coach. You know, uh, these guys are setting a tone in the recruiting to say, hey, these are the type of guys we're going after. I, I'm not sure if you saw yesterday the uh, the video they showed with Coach Freeze and, and the guys once they announced like a, college, a high school recruit, you know, to come to Auburn. You know, it, it's contagious. Yeah. Because this motivates those guys to say, hey, we're changing the narrative around Auburn. Yeah. You know, this is not what it was the last two to three years. We're changing the narrative. We're getting it back to what it wants to be. And if you want to be a, if you want to be a part of this program, then you, you need to buy all the way in because and Coach Freeze is also putting pressure on the guys that are here. Hey, if you don't want to play or you don't want to live up to to, to what we know you can do and you don't want to focus on the things you need to focus on, then there's people that's coming in here to replace you. Yeah. So you better get going. You better change the narrative about what it is you want to do here at Auburn and what you want to be about. And uh, and you have to create that competitive environment if you want to win in this conference because you can't worry about a national championship or you know, playoffs if you don't win your conference first. And right. that's what you have to focus at first is win your conference and then everything else will set itself in place. I totally agree with you. And I think that you know, the current landscape of the SEC is so top heavy. You know, we talk so much about what Georgia and Alabama have established in terms of dynasty. We're no longer just talking about one winning season or some Im impressive resume in 2022. We're talking about teams that are repeatedly getting top five recruiting classes and contesting for championships every year. That's how the SEC landscape has been for a while. And I've often thought about how do you change that? How do you uproot it? Because it does seem like it's kind of the same song and dance. At least Georgia came in and mixed some things up. It wasn't just Alabama or Clemson anymore. But still, they were always representing the East most of the time. So I've thought a lot about how does that happen? How, especially a new coaching staff, you know, who has to come in and, and really work from the ground up. And it made me think of, of your team and your class. And, and you've talked a lot about that time period for you and how several of you looked around at each other and thought, we could do this together. We could be the team. We could be the group that does this. It wasn't a bunch of individual. I mean, y'all were individual stars, but that wasn't your mindset. You know, I, I think about when we got a guy like Tank Bigsby. And believe me, Tank was fantastic. But you can't rewrite an entire narrative of an entire program by yourself. I don't care how good of an athlete you are. It's a team sport. And so I think with this first major get, this first name like Riddick, he falls in with other pieces that are already starting to take shape. And now it's about guys with that same mentality that are going to get on campus, look at guys like that and say, hey, we could rewrite all of this. 
Yeah, and that's the whole goal. You know, even when you talk to Jarquez, uh, you know, last season, you know, he was thirsty yeah. to get more carries, you know, mm-hmm. but a lot of the offense was kind of featured around Tank. And, you know, when we played in 04, you know, unfortunately, when Lack got hurt in 2002 uh, mm-hmm. in the Florida game, that kind of opened the door for everyone to see what Ronnie can do. And then right. once I saw what Ronnie could do, so when then Lack got back healthy, it wasn't like, oh, let's lean on one person in the run game. Like, then we was able to, to, to utilize both of their abilities and, and keep both of them involved in the game and keep them fresh. You know, one right. guy comes out, the other guy comes in to keep punishing you. And I think that this, this, this is what you, this is winning football. And mm-hmm. when you talk about, you know, all the players and when we got Devin and Rama should do and being on my new and Anthony Mitts and Courtney Taylor and, you know, all these, all these big receivers, uh, along with Jairus McIntyre and some of those guys, then the nucleus start to shape and start to take form. Right. Uh, just a matter of, okay, our sophomore year, we went nine and four, but people don't realize we were a drop away from beating USC that year. And we was a field goal from being three feet higher to beat Florida in, in Gainesville. And we was a fourth and 15 for Michael Johnson catching the ball in the back of the end zone from being 11 and one football team yeah, you know, uh, or 12 and one football team and being in a BCS, uh, being in a BCS somewhere. So we saw things were just that close. Yeah. And then and once we got, you know, once we figured it out, like, okay, guys, we're we're on to something, but how can we piece it all together? And it was about, you know, everyone just got to lock in, make sure we focus on what we need to focus on. Of course, you know, coaches had to be put in the right place, uh, you know, sure. and that type of thing, because, you know, they have to be able to take talent and know how to use talent. You can stack right. up talent all day long, but if you don't know how to utilize that talent, all you have is just material, board, uh, bulletin board material that you can look at. There's all these five stars, but if you don't know how to put it together, it doesn't matter. So right. I think people have seen Freeze over the years, Taylor, at Ole Miss, stack up some five-star guys, but he he knew how to utilize them. And I yes. think that's that's the difference in this situation is that's what happened with us. When everybody got in place, everything took off. And I think this is the same situation where he gets the right type of guys, Auburn can be back in the, in the hunt uh, with the Bamas and Georgias and LSUs over the next couple of years. Well, it's a tale as old as time. How often have we talked about the SEC programs that, you know, are dominating in recruiting, i.e. Texas A&M, and it doesn't matter that you were a five-star because you're getting lost in the shuffle once you get there. That's where the development piece comes in. So it all goes hand in hand. You, You can't have one without the other. I would actually argue that development is more important than kind of where your ranking is coming out of high school. But, I mean, I've covered... So many two-star and three-star guys that thrived in college because they got put in the right system with the right coaches. So it really is just about all the correct pieces falling into place. But this is inevitably going to create some hype and some excitement right before all of these guys are on campus. And you want to be a part of where the action is. You know, you want to be following that excitement that's now been generated by this commit. So As you can see, we have been joined by our guest of the episode, and I was so impressed hearing you at SEC Media Days that I immediately texted Jason. I was like, we got to get this guy on the podcast. He's such a good speaker. Very impressive. Elijah McAllister joins us now. Taylor Davis, Jason Campbell, Elijah, thank you so much for taking some time to join us. And War Eagle, I'm sure you're getting used to hearing that, saying that. Takes you a minute. but. Obviously, a very credible, impressive resume for you. Several seasons in the SEC playing at Vanderbilt, captain. And honestly, your former coach, Clark Lee, was asked about you at Media Day and spoke so highly of you and what you did for that program. We know that you're going to enjoy your time on the Plains as well. But what kind of drew you to Auburn? I, I have to assume you were aware of some of it, but, you know, Vanderbilt and Auburn don't get to cross paths all that often. So walk me through a little bit of, of that transition period for you. Yeah, well, firstly, thank you for the kind words. I appreciate you most important and keeping up with me, SC Media Days and everything in between. Jason, thank you for reaching out and allowing me to have the opportunity to be on the show. And I'm just happy to be here. Uh, War Eagle, as always. Um, and then just you know, talking about my journey uh, here, what led me to Auburn was, well, I entered the transfer portal and I knew Auburn was a great institution athletically and academically because as I'm growing up in middle school, I'm seeing Cam Newton win national title. I'm seeing the kick six. This is Auburn that I know growing up yeah. as a kid. So I knew that Auburn had a tradition, that place where people love being here, people love enjoying. 
themselves and love their football program. And then just being recruited by Coach Freeze and just having that faith-based relationship with him, allowing us to connect on a, a different level, a spiritual level, allowed me to have confidence in who he was as a coach leading this program. And then as I sit here today with the opportunity to play, the opportunity to lead, uh, make plays on the field, just a combination of a lot of different things. That's pretty much sums it up. Hey, Elijah, you talk about, you know, your neck has gotten big, like Takeo Spikes, you know, since you've been at Auburn. So I'm pretty sure y'all hitting the weight room really hard. <laughs> but, you know, coming over from Vanderbilt and, and, and then coming to Auburn. So you understand this conference. You know what it takes week in and week out to go against some of the best right tackles and left tackles that, that you're going to see in college football. But just talk about the journey as far as like, because I understand in high school, you was a basketball player, led your team to a state championship, state title. Uh, also, you love to watch soccer. You play the piano. You know, uh, you got your degree in medicine. Now you're trying to get your Ph.D. Uh, just talk about all these things you have going on and, and who you are as a person. Let the Auburn fan base know, like, what they're getting, because you are a guy that takes a lot of your NIL money and institute it into the community. And uh, well, it speaks a lot about what you do and who you are as a person. But just kind of let people know, like, you know, your, your, a little bit about your background. Yeah. So I think who I am as a person kind of speaks volumes into the fact that I've only been here for a short amount of time. And I was selected to represent my coaches, my teammates, my family and the university on the highest stage. And Agreed. Media day. So um, that, you know, is rooted in who I am off the field as a man of faith someone who loves to serve people, someone who loves to continue to give back and sacrifice uh, my time, my energy, and the things that, you know, I enjoy for the betterment of our world and the people that I surround myself with. And that honestly stems from people sacrificing themselves for me to be in a position I am today to play at this institution at the highest level on the field and, you know, be a high-ranking academic as well and getting my degrees and also being able to impact the community. So it stems from just my family and my uh, peers and my coaches and everybody in between sacrificing their time and themselves to allow me to be in position I am today, which then, you know, I continue to do, elevate, and then give back to the next generation. So it's a culmination of a lot of things. I'm just enjoying my time and being able to, you know, continue to uh, use my platform, which is football, for my purpose, which is serving people and uh, loving God. So Amazing. Well, we commend you for that already, and we are definitely lucky to have an ambassador like you on the plane. But well, let's talk on the field, man, because uh, we have a lot to still learn about this team and the coaching staff. Coach Breeze mentioned that at Media Days as well, saying that fall camp is going to be pivotal. There's a lot we don't know yet, but uh, he, he likes the fight that he is seeing in this team so far. We we had Coach Aldridge on a couple weeks ago, and, and he's fired up about y'all's room for sure. But give us a little insight just into the mentality of this defense, kind of the approach to what you guys want to do in Coach Robert's system and, and just the overall identity that you head into season expecting to have. Yeah, I mean, Coach Robert's defense is a multiple-fronted uh, defense. We're going to be moving a lot of different places with a lot of different schemes and people out there on the field. But the basis of it stems from running to the ball, playing really hard, and creating turnovers. And I think that's been a point of emphasis not only in the spring, but as we work out and train mm -hmm. and push ourselves to our highest lim limits and levels, which allows us – to, you know, in turn, have a great fall camp and showcase that ability to create turnovers and play really hard in fall camps that, you know, during the season it can happen. So uh, the defense is, you know, coming along well. We grew from January to July, and now we added some new pieces, some great pieces that I'm excited to be able to play with. I'm excited to be able to, you know, watch them make plays and then make plays alongside them as well um, to bolster our defense in a lot of different ways that I think will help the overall team because, you know, the better the defense is, the better the team is. So. Right. Talk about, you know, just gearing up for fall camp. Like, the moment is here. You're tired of all the talking about what y'all going to do this season and, you know, all the pieces you added. And you've been here since January now. And now you get a chance to actually lace it up again. And this time it's not for a spring game. It's for the real stuff. And, uh, and, and you look up in almost a month and a little bit over a month from now, you're lacing it up against UMass and, and you're running through Jordan Hare. Talk about, man, like what this moment actually really means, like to gear up for the season, though. Yes, sir. But I'm excited to get away from, you know, like you said, the talk and the buzz around the season and actually put out a great product for the Auburn family to be excited about because they're excited about it right now in the offseason and in their intermediate. But I want them to be able to be excited while we're out there on the field making plays and 
you know, doing everything that we want to do for them and for ourselves because we've worked so hard to do so. So I'm just excited for that. Um, for me personally, I know it's my last year. I'm excited to showcase my talents on the best and biggest stage and the best place in the world, but also be able to lead in a way that's going to elevate our roster. And also I know our roster is excited to, you know, showcase uh, that, you know, love that we have for the university through our play because I know they're excited and I'm, I know they're excited to see us, you know, do things on Saturdays. Is this going to be your sixth year? Yes, it will be. You're one of those. You're you're like the grandpa of the team. Exactly. <laughs> People call me Unc, so they, they I got to <laughs> oh, Okay, we'll take that over, Grandpa, for sure. <laughs> you're in a unique situation because not only are you a transfer in your final year of eligibility, but you've come into a program that, it's no secret, is trying to rewrite some narratives and is coming off a tumultuous couple of years for the program. And so for a guy like you that – I can tell has has a lot of pride for the opportunity that you have. What did you see or hear from this coaching staff that kind of told you this is a situation that I can not only help on the field, but I can help kind of steer this ship in the right direction? I think the coaching staff, what I really enjoyed about them coming in anew in January and starting fresh at this university is that they weren't in a rebuild mindset. You know, hmm. it's going to take time to you know, get the level of recruits that Auburn is used to getting and will continue to get as we just got a nice uh, five-star linebacker commit yesterday. Yep. So thank, thankfully for that and War Eagle. But they're not in that mindset where they want to uh, take three, four, five years to build this thing and take some time. They want to be able to put a nice product out on the field in the immediate, which is why I think you see a lot of transfers coming in. And who knows what that's going to look like and what the win total is going to look like at the end of the year. Right. But you know, the mindset is surrounded around winning as fast as possible. Yeah. And I think that's what uh, spoke to me in the recruiting process because anybody can take time and, you know, get their guys in and recruit. And that's going to happen here. They're going to get high level players and it's going to all work out. But in the immediate, that's what was spoken to me is that we want to be able to win as many games as possible as soon as possible. And you yeah. got to get some older experienced guys to do so. Yeah. You talk about that whole rebuilding process. There's no time to rebuild in the SEC. Um, you know, especially <laughs> at a program like Auburn, uh, you know, immediately they want to be back in the conversation with Georgia, Bama and LSU, uh, you know, rightfully so. And because these last two years have been really tough on Auburn, Auburn, Auburn family. And, you know, to get guys like yourself, like I said, coach is not just getting players in the transfer portal. He's getting high character guys. But just talk about, you know, you speak to DeMarcus Riddick, and I saw everybody in the locker room and Coach Freeze had it up on the screen. You know, guys were excited and going crazy. You are a veteran. What does that do really to a team? Does that make y'all feel like y'all are making an impact now within the recruits that's coming on campus? Yeah, 100%. And Coach Freeze always talks about it. It's all about recruiting. And this is a place that we're going to love and continue to want to see grow far beyond after we graduate. So it's not something where – Oh, I'm going to do my time here and I'm going to leave and it's whatever. I want to leave Auburn better than I found it. So if I'm continuing to recruit, continue to lead the young guys in this locker room that we have, the talent level and continue to recruit and elevate the roster far beyond my years, I know Auburn's going to be better because of it. And I'm going to be more happy because although in the immediate, I didn't see the results that I particularly maybe wanted to see mm -hmm. right now, I know in the future that it's going to be completely better because of the work I put in right now to say here today. So it's something that, you know, allows us to have some joy and to where Auburn's heading right now and in the future because we know we have a hand in that based off, you know, how we continue to work in our process every single day as we set this foundation for year one. I love that. Well, let me run through some stats. If my research does me correct, 65 <laughs> tackles in 37 games, two and a half sacks, six and a half tackles for loss, two forced fumbles, and an interception. And like we talked about at the beginning, you're going to be playing in a multiple defense. You've got a guy like Coach Roberts and, and even Coach Aldridge that really kind of emphasize on forcing offensive mistakes. What skill set of yours do you think is going to fit well in this system? If, if you're coming in and going, I have really honed in on this aspect of my game and it is really going to translate to this system. Yeah, I think it's a couple things. The first thing I say is I'm back at a position where I've made plays before in my career and, and the stand up uh, mm -hmm. like a role where I feel more comfortable in, not in a you know, four down defensive end or different things like that, which, you know, particularly doesn't tailor to my skill set. Sure. Um, so I finally, you know, back in place where I feel comfortable. And I think what I can contribute to this defense and to this team is 
well, firstly, you know, my versatility. I played in a lot of different funds, a lot of different systems, and played against everybody you can think of. So, okay. you know, versatility and, and nothing's going to shock me. I'm going to have yeah. in every game I go into because, I mean, I've, I've lived and I've done it. I've made, you know, some splash plays in this league at this highest level. And then I think, you know, my length um, and my ability to use my length to my advantage, whether that's setting a nice edge, um, you know, occasion defense in, whether that's knocking the tight end back and playing a nice six tech, whether that's rushing the pass or using a long arm stab, different things like that. So I think the first thing is my versatility and the second thing is my length. That's in the run game and the pass game. There you go. Did you play both sides in high school? Yeah, I played both ways. I only played defense one year, my senior year. But I, I was a really? Yeah, I was a receiver my whole life. Um, and I got recruited to play tight end by some other schools, but ultimately I, I see these contracts these guys are getting the head rushers. <laughs> you, know, you know who else was like that that played at Auburn that played that didn't play deep? Carlos Dansby. Yeah. He was a receiver when he got to Auburn. Big old fourteen size shoe try to come out there and run some routes. And I'm like, dude, you like you a big old sailboat out in the ocean just 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 floating on the ocean, man. I like you know, I like throwing you the rock, Carlos, but I don't know, bro. I don't know if you can use you on the other side. He ended up being one of the greatest uh, defensive players to come through Auburn and had yeah, a year NFL career at defense. And uh, and his hands, because he could catch as a receiver in high school, got picks in college. So, yeah. you know, I just got to get two picks for my man Elijah this year. <laughs> you know, just a tip ball and a catch, you know. I can see it, catch. man. So, you know, get that touchdown. So we'll see you on the planes this fall. I like it, man. I like it. Well, Eliza, before we let you go, I'm going to do some rapid fire, get to know you a little better. Look. What are you getting your degree in at Auburn? It It is, you're getting a doctorate, right? Yeah, yes, I am. It'll be educational leadership and psychology. I mean, yeah. overachiever in a nutshell we got here. All right. Uh, have you had the opportunity to find a favorite restaurant yet? I, I know that takes time, but... If you had to name a favorite in Auburn so far, uh, right now is the Hound. Right now, I loved the Hound when I was in school. So good. Uh, what aspect of a home game day are you most looking forward to experiencing? The fanfare, Tiger Walk, Eagle Flight, everything. It was my first time, you know, playing in the stadium at all. At all, and my first time playing in the stadium where the home fans were for you. So I'm just excited to be able to experience the love from the fans. Yeah, so my talent that way. So. I mean, look, selling out season tickets is uh, pretty impressive. So I would imagine that first run out will be absolutely <laughs> incredible. All right, and then lastly, what is your pregame music vibe? I'm more of a R and B guy before music. I like to listen to okay. some stuff because I'm usually got to be like the mediator in the locker room, making sure guys aren't getting too high or getting too low. So too low, yeah, I stay even killed because I understand, you know. My impact can be, you know, totally. if, I'm, if I'm too high. Uh, no. So. <laughs> yeah, I mean, my guy's getting his PhD, so I wouldn't have been surprised if you said, like, Beethoven or something <laughs> pre-game. Like, I thought it would be interesting. Well, Elijah McAllister, so good to chat with you. We cannot wait to see the impact that you make out there. And it all starts next week with fall camp. Best of luck out there, man. And uh, enjoy every bit of it. War Eagle. Thank you very much for having me. Where are you? Where are you, bro?